What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a Trickstar deck profile but it's not just any Trickstar deck profile. This deck is built specifically to compete and combat today's metagame. It's supposed to take some of the most broken cards that you can abuse in today's metagame and use it against today's format. So I hope you guys enjoy these videos and if you do make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on Spanko deck profiles, combo videos, dual videos, product openings, all that good stuff, you guys will see it here on the channel. So I hope you guys enjoy the video, and with that, onto the deck profile. All right, so just before we get started with today's video, I do want to say as you guys are looking at the profile here, it is more of an anti-meta build of Trickstar. And the reason for that is because this deck can actually abuse some of the most broken and some of the most powerful cards against today's format. So we're talking Sprite, Tier Limits, Despia, Sword Soul, all that good stuff. This deck is essentially built to beat those kind of decks because once you get your setup going, you're pretty much going to have an easy time against a lot of those decks because they have a tough time playing around some of these very, very broken and powerful cards. So let's get started here. We, of course, are playing three Trickstar Candina, three Trickstar Licorice. Now, I know some people wanted to play Licorice at two, but I think in this build specifically, you need to be playing three because one of the main win conditions outside of stunning your opponent is you actually being able to burn your opponent and so this way you can deal enough damage to actually game them because you can sit on a floodgate but if you can't game your opponent then it doesn't really do anything for you so licorice is really important for that reason then of course we're playing the one lily bell this one's very mandatory as well as two trickstar corobane this is the lineup that i'm really liking for this engine i don't think i want to play more than this these are just the best ones and i think it's the most consistent engine then because we all know light stage came back to two so we're playing the one terraforming as well as two light stage the one terraforming now i think is viable because because we have two light stage hopefully on this upcoming balance we get light stage back to three but for right now we're playing with two light stage and i think this just makes sense these ratios because now you can actually candina and search for your reincarnation rather than needing to search for your light stage right away so with the terraforming availability it makes a uh, light stage just a little bit easier to get into so you want to be playing these ones keep in mind at the end of the day if you're setting up light stage with candina and like reincarnation you're in such a good spot because of course like we're going to get into right now we're playing three reincarnation and three droll and lock bird which is another win condition for you if you set up the double reincarnation droll lock your opponent is playing with no hand essentially and then you're gonna have so much advantage you're pretty much winning the game so the really cool thing about this deck is not only do you have the win condition of all these broken cards that you guys are about to see soon, but you also have this win condition here where if you set up reincarnation droll, you're 100% winning the game. There's no way your opponent is coming back from that, especially because you're going to be doing so much burn damage with Licorice. You're going to have a big setup. If you Licorice bounce back at Candina, you can normal summon the Candina and then you can keep going from there, right? So there's just going to be so much resources for you versus your opponent who's not going to have anything. I don't think I need to explain this further because droll reincarnation is very, very broken and then we are playing triple pot of extravagance of course this is the best draw card i think you can play in the deck yes prosperity is really good but i think in this deck extravagance just makes a little bit more sense because you guys can see after this we're playing a lot of trap cards and with trap based decks you really want to see as many of those traps as possible so for that reason i think extravagance is a little bit better because we're getting to draw two rather than just add one you know what i mean so prosperity is a great card don't get me wrong but i think extravagance in this deck just makes a little bit more sense and one thing i kind of want to say about this deck is if you guys are looking at it just at face value this deck is actually very very budget like the main deck a lot of these cards just come as commons now so it's actually very easy to build this deck at a very very minimal budget so then we're gonna get into the broken cards of the format we're playing three goes in match and three rivalry of the warlords so these are the floodgates that we're playing and it just makes so much sense in this deck they synergize so so well with this deck so first of all all your trickstar monsters are light and fairy so you can play these under both rivalry and goes in but on top of that you guys can see we're playing the scythe package here scythe is also a light fairy which means you can still scythe your opponent through the goes in match and a rivalry of warlords so there's just so much synergy in that sense and now if you want to think about the meta matchups right okay let's talk about sprite sprite cannot play through goes and match let's be honest they have too many attributes there's no way they're going to be able to play through goes and match all right especially if you're setting up with any other trap card they're going to have a tough time right now we're talking about tier limits now tier limits usually just summons dark monsters so tier limits can play through goes in a little bit better however they can't play through 
rivalry because once they set up an aqua monster on their side of the board what are they gonna go kick Kalos I guess and they're gonna pass like they can't really do anything much more but on top of that rivalry is also really good against a sprite matchup because yes they can still set up their sprite monsters because they're thunder however they're not gonna be able to get into their frog engine which means that they're not gonna get to toad which means that they're not gonna have an omni negate on the board for them so these are just really good into today's meta now if you think about goes in a rivalry into sword soul for example goes in is insane into sword soul because all their attributes are essentially different the only one that you may be able to play is like Moye because Moye and the token are both going to be water. But then what are you going to synchro summon into, right? So Gozen is really good in Sword Soul. Same thing with Rivalry and Gozen are both really good into Despia as well. So all of the meta, these pretty much just hit everything in the meta and they don't touch your deck at all because you're going to be able to play through these two. So you have to be playing these six in my opinion. They're just so broken. Then we're playing Triple Trap Trick. Of course, we know Trap Trick essentially replaces a reincarnation. And the best thing about Trap Trick here is that you know how before you had to open double reincarnation droll for the droll lock trap trick makes it so that you only have to open one reincarnation and one trap trick because trap trick will act as your second reincarnation trap trick is also going to search these other cards that i'm going to be showing you guys so we're playing two artifact sanctum here of course sanctum gets you into scythe you scythe lock your opponent and then the nice thing is you're playing a light fairy which this is going to give you access to your extra deck as well and again it synergizes very very well with the goes and match as well as the rival of the warlord so artifact scythe i think is just so powerful in this deck and then we're playing triple imperm now you guys can see that a deck like this that's playing so many traps can kind of struggle going second so for that reason i think imper made a lot of sense because it's a hand trap for you if you are forced to go second and so there's kind of a really good reason it's also searchable off trap trick if you need to but yeah this is kind of why you want to be playing the trap trick just give you more versatility and then we're playing another really really broken trap card in today's format different dimension ground now one thing about the tier limit matchup for example is all of those cards need to be hitting the graveyard and this card doesn't let them hit the graveyard but not only against the tier limit matchup even if you think about the sprite matchup right if if you different dimension ground them they're not going to be able to send like their swap frogs or their ronin totems from their deck to the graveyard for the toad play but on top of that if you different dimension ground them what are they going to be summoning off of their sprite elf right because everything is going to be banished so this card does hit sprite it hits the tier limit matchup of course and of course if you think about sword soul if you think about despia everything getting banished is actually not good for them because they need resources in their grave so for that reason i think the different dimension ground is broken and of course you can search it off the trap trick as well and then the only reason we're playing two is because we're playing the one macrocosmo which is essentially your third copy because macrocosmo says that all cards sent to the graveyard are banished instead and the really nice thing is here you guys can see the best part about trick stars is licorice is always going to be bouncing candina back to hand and then so essentially every single turn you shouldn't be having these cards going to the graveyard which synergizes really really well with these traps over here and then we're playing the one dimensional fissure as our 40th card i wanted to play it 40 on the dot but these are just two anti-meta cards that are just so powerful in today's format that i really wanted to play them in the deck because they can come up and they are very powerful when they do so this deck this 40 card main deck i think is very very powerful i wanted to play 41 and the 41st card was called by the grave now i wanted to play called by the grave just potentially to protect the reincarnation from something like an ash but i just think you didn't need it you could play 41 though i just wanted to let you guys know that if you wanted to do that you could play 41 with the called by the grave but uh, i think this 40 on the dot is very very crisp and very very clean so then moving on to the extra deck here we are playing two constellar pleiades now what's the best thing about pleiades it's a level five that you can make with a scythe and a coral bane and you could also make it under your Gozen match because it's a light monster. So it being light just synergizes even further with this deck because it's like, hey, okay, I have a Gozen match flipped up. I have a Coral Bane and I have a Scythe on my board, but the Scythe is now essentially useless unless my opponent has no monsters and I'm just doing a bunch of damage. But if my opponent does set up some kind of board, then you can go into your Pleiades under Gozen match. Pleiades can bounce a card. It can attack with Pleiades and Pleiades is just such a good card in this deck. So I'm playing two of these. You guys can see we're playing two of most of the stuff in the extra deck and that's because we're playing Extravagance, of course. You really Really go into the extra deck but it's just good to have because when you do go into it it's very very powerful then for another level five we're playing is two volcasaurus volcasaurus is one of those cards that i think is really just good into time trickstar in general is good into time because you're going to be doing a lot of burn damage but volcasaurus is just that extra card that's like hey we're going to go into time i'm going to volcasaurus pop do some damage and then going to win in that sense so that's why i do like playing the volcasaurus then we're playing two nightmare shark number 47 now why this card is really good is because you can actually use two licorice to make it and this card you can detach a card target a water monster and it can actually attack your opponent directly this turn and so what that lets you do is first of all it lets you do some pretty big damage but also it lets you give you access to zeus and that's a really cool thing about this card is because it lets you set up a zeus play so that even on the crackback your opponent won't be able to essentially set up another board or break your board because you're going to have that zeus interruption now again a lot of the time you're not going to be going into this because of the floodgates however 
Zeus is also a light monster. So remember how I was talking about Pleiades, if you can make the Pleiades under the Gozin? You can make Pleiades, bounce a card, attack with Pleiades, and then make Zeus right on top of it, which is still really, really powerful. So that's why I think Zeus is just really good in this deck. And then we're playing two Trickstar Holly Angel, one Nightmare Cerberus, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Unicorn, one Axis Code Talker, as well as one Underworld Goddess. Now these you rarely go into, but you can go into them, especially Underworld Goddess, if you need to break like a boss monster that you can't otherwise break. And remember how I said earlier, this deck is very, very budget. It still is. The only, I guess, not budget card in this deck is Access Code Talker. So over here, I wanted to show you guys a budget alternative. Boral Sword Dragon is a budget alternative for the Access Code Talker, okay? Because I wanted to make sure you guys know that this deck is very, very affordable. Everything in this deck, like I said, I'm pretty sure just comes as common. Now, maybe not Reincarnation, but reincarnation might be a couple bucks and so everything in here you guys can see should be very affordable again extrav just got reprinted in a structure deck as a common these you can all get as commons these come as super rares i believe very very budget deck so i wanted to make sure you guys had access to this and because of that i wanted to show you guys access code which i think is a, technically a better card however if you guys are budget players or need a budget alternative or don't have access to access code then you guys can play borrow sword instead it doesn't make that much of a difference you're rarely going into it anyways to be honest with you the most important things in your extra deck are your Pleiades and your Zeus and then I guess you could argue Nightmare Shark but that's really it now, nothing else is going to be that important in your extra deck so with that being said I think this deck is very very powerful very anti-meta build of Trickstar however I think you guys should try it out for yourselves because it really is built to beat pretty much anything in the meta so that is it for today's video I hope you guys did enjoy this is my take on Trickstar I just think this is the most competitively viable way to play Trickstar in today's format keep in mind a lot of the most broken cards that you guys are seeing in this deck profile a lot of people won't have inherent outs for so it makes a lot of games really easy when your opponent is not prepared now let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any suggestions or any opinions or any ideas because that's how we get better together as a community now if you guys did enjoy the video though make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already it's free and it helps support your boy so i can continue creating content just like this one so i hope you guys did enjoy thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that spank them sign it out peace Get up, get up.